This is the new and revised Garmin Connect app, and in this in-depth video, I'll show you everything important you need to know about it. Garmin had rolled out this new look as a beta a few months ago, and I made the switch to that version basically since it came out, and just recently they fully released this new version. This is the new home screen, and it's more simplified than before, and it consists of two main sections and a couple other parts. But what you need to know about it is that depending on your goals, what you see in home screen might be different than mine. So if you've had any activities today, you'll see them at the very top and you can scroll through them, open them and take a look. But the most important part of the home screen is the in focus section. Again, what you choose as your most important goal will be what you see here first. And it can have up to six data cards that you can scroll through, which used to be limited to five only uh, when it was in beta. Personally, monitoring my energy level on a daily basis is the most important to me. So I chose that when I first had to set up the new app. And that's why when I open it, first thing I see is the body battery, even though this is a second data screen. But regardless, if I want to, I can reorder these cards. And for that, you need to scroll down and tap edit home. And as you can see, you can even turn off the in focus section altogether. And from here, I can add new trend cards to follow and reorder them as long as there's up to six of them, at least as of now. But think of the in focus section as the place that you can track your most important trends. Now, before we move on, you might have noticed that in the edit home, my sleep coach was on, but nothing shows up here. That's because you need to be connected to a watch like Veni 3 that actually has a sleep coach feature to be able to see anything here. All right, next up or rather down is the at a glance section. This is another group of cards showing your stats, except they're smaller in size and focus on a specific value instead of a trend. You can have up to 20 of these cards, but only eight of them will show up uh, on the home screen. Just tap see all to see the rest of them and you can edit them right from here or also from the edit home page like before. So for example, I can add the pulse oximetry card here or if I have the hydration tracker, I can see at a glance my consumption and also if I've reached my target in the past seven days, and I can quickly add some amount here as well. So to recap, the in focus section is mostly to see a trend of your most important stats. And the glance section shows you more stats, but mostly as single values, which are the latest values. Now, after these two sections, depending on your setup, you may not see anything. So in the home settings page, just activate all these other options. So you'd at least know what they are and what they look like. And if you don't like them, you can hide them again. Before I talk about the events and challenges, I'm going to scroll down to show you these two last sections. So the yesterday and last seven days were added just recently to make it similar to the old version. And if you ask me, everybody should enable these two because sometimes you just want to quickly check something from yesterday or the days before. And instead of going through some charts, you can see all that right away. For example, I can see my average hydration, HR and other stats for the past seven days, which can be very useful. All right, so back to the events section in here, you can see all the upcoming race events. You can either search and join these events or even create your own. So now I'm going to create this virtual 5k event. I'm going to give it a name and choose a date, let's say June 22nd, and then choose the type of event, which is a run. Then it's going to ask me if it's a race, which it is, and then I can keep it private or make it public. So. What do you say we actually make this a public race and do it together? So I'll share the link in the description if you want to join. There are also other affiliate links in the description that you can use to support me, including the option to become a Patreon supporter. And if you decided to participate in the race, let me know in the comments. All right, so next we have the training plans, which is basically your Garmin coach workouts. And if you don't see it, just scroll down to edit home and enable it from here. So let's see what this is. Garmin Coach is a feature that helps you run a 5K, 10K, or half a marathon with the help of a few virtual coaches. So before I had a Garmin watch a few years ago, I thought this was a one-on-one -on -one coaching, but it's just a few coaches and a few clips of them during the entirety of the program with different styles and have to go through a setup plan and state your goals and past experience and your availability during the week and a target race date. Each coach's program is a bit different, but for example, if you want to try a 5k and you've never done it before, I'd recommend Coach Jeff. And the programs are a bit adaptable based on your performance and progression. Next on the home page, we have the challenges. So Gorman has a challenges feature as a way to gamify their app experience and make it more fun and engaging. Now, there are a ton of these monthly challenges that you can join and 
When you reach the target of the challenge, you get its badge, and each badge can earn you at least one point. To see that, you should go to the challenge page and then view badge. Sometimes there are other rewards there too. For example, a free trial for an app. And I'll show you where those badges are useful in a bit. But remember that you can also try different expeditions like climbing a mountain or something. And these usually earn you more points. Another thing to point out here is that you can also create your own challenges so that others can join. But you have to have some connections first, which you can do from here. Back in the My Challenges section, you can see your ongoing challenges. What you need to know is that you can leave a challenge as long as it's an ongoing challenge. So for example, from down here, I can see all the past challenges, but I can't leave the challenges that I didn't complete. That wouldn't be fair. So that might give you another motivation to actually complete a challenge. Now the navigation or tab bar at the bottom of the app has a shortcut for home, more, which used to be the menu at the top left, plus three other ones. Now, if I tap more and then edit, I can customize and reorder these as long as there are only three of them here. If you're connected with anyone on your Garmin Connect, then the news feed is a very important place. Here you can see all your connections, activities, and just like any other social app, you can like and comment, but you're also in total control of your own activities privacy. I'll show you later how to set a default privacy mode, but for each activity, you can have a different privacy setting. So now if you search my name and even become my connection, you can't see this post unless I allow it to. Now, next we have the activities page, but it's a bit different than the activities on the home page. On the home page, even doing a health snapshot counts as an activity. But on the activity page, there are actual physical activities that you can track. Now, in terms of the statistics that you get, all the activities are pretty much the same. For example, the running page gives me an overview and summary of the total distance, time, calories, etc. during a specific time period could be from the past year, last month, or seven days ago. And you can see your personal records uh, from down here as well. But here's a tip. This is something that I always do. If I now open an activity and I want to quickly compare that with another activity, I'd go to view all running activities at the bottom. Then I can quickly find the other ones. If this was a gym workout, then it would instead show me all the gym activities. So this is much faster than going through all the activities of any type because at least now the other activities are similar to the current activity. And as you can see, after completing this activity, I earned a badge and got a point for it. Otherwise, if you want to see a list of all the activities you've done, just go back to the activities page and tap all activities. Now I want to go back to one actual activity page in a second, but let's finish off the activities page first. So in case for whatever reason you didn't wear your watch during your activity or or another tracker, you can manually record that activity from down here. Then there is the steps chart, and what's important is the edit goal button here. I would recommend almost everyone to enable the auto goal. This way, if for whatever reason you haven't been hitting your step target, it automatically reduces your goal so it becomes easier for you. As an average person with a busy lifestyle, if you set a static 10,000 steps a day target, it could be discouraging and difficult to pick it up again after, I don't know, a week of not walking enough or being active enough. But if you prefer your own intuition and you're very active, you can use the manual static target setting. Then we have the floor and intensity minutes that don't have the auto goal, but you can adjust them based on your recent activity levels. For example, I see that I can definitely bump up my intensity minutes, which is by the way, a weekly goal, not daily like the steps on floor. So I'm gonna increase it to 400. All right, now I'm gonna go over my favorite part of the app, which is perhaps the most important feature and that's individual activities. So let's try a running activity. This is a slow 5K treadmill run. And when I open it, I get an overview of the activity. I can change the privacy settings, make it a favorite activity, add a picture to it and write down a note. Honestly, the fact that you can write down notes is a great feature that other brands definitely need to implement if they haven't yet. I can also change the name of the activity altogether uh, you get some stats, you can comment below it, and if you have any connections, you'll see it. And if there are other comments on it, you can see them here as well. Another nice feature is the self-evaluation, and I think the ability to add perceived effort is far superior to a boring, generic, you did a great job like prompt that you might see from other brands. So as you can see, I felt very strong when I did this, but I didn't put that much effort into it anyway because this was just an easy zone to training. 
And as you can see, I use the Forerunner 165 music to track this particular activity. Please subscribe so I can make more videos. And if you have any questions, always comment below to get help from myself or someone else. If you want to buy any new gear, always check out the affiliate links in the description first. And if you can't find your product, you can suggest it to me so we can add them if possible. Now, this was just the first page of the activity. But before we move on to the other pages, let me show you some most people miss. And that's right here in the menu, edit activity. Now, like I said, most people don't ever bother with this page. But actually, personally, this is the first thing I visit when I open an activity. So you can again change the name and add a note but also you can change the type of activity i mean probably in this case it doesn't make sense to change it but this is especially designed for creating manual activities which by now you know how to do one thing i always do is select the event type which is different from the type of activity by default garmin never selects the event type for you so you'd always have to select it yourself in this case this was a fitness event not a race or anything like that so that's what i'm choosing here Again, there is the self-evaluation part. You can also edit the distance, the total duration, and so on from here. Another important part is hidden under here. So I'm gonna tap show more data. I'll just scroll through slowly so you can see what kinds of things you can change here. For example, if you consumed any fluids during the activity, you can add it here to know the estimated net fluid based on your sweat loss. Now the next one, the stats page gives you a breakdown of almost everything but it really depends on the kind of device you have. For example, here I can see running dynamics, training effect, and power, but not all Garmin watches track these, and some of them track even more things. And if you use the body battery feature, this last one shows you the net impact of your activity on your energy level. This is especially useful if you have an older Garmin watch because the newer ones actually show you this on the watch itself. On the charts page, you can see all kinds of cool looking graphics and you can expand them and overlay another chart onto your current one. And this last part is definitely one of the unique features of this app because it lets you add your own gear that you wore for this activity. Now, that could be your shoes, your bike or anything else. And it's not just keeping track of what you use or wore, but also keeps track of how long or how far you've used them. For example, if I choose these winter running shoes, that would be 173 kilometers in total that uh, I've run with them. If you don't have any gears yet, I wanna add them. Let's go back to the main menu, then gear, select a type and add them here. You can even retire these once they get old or whatever. Pretty cool feature. Next up, we have the health stats menu and I think pretty much everything you can see here is also visible on your watch. But going through them quickly, there's the sleep page with a sleep score out of 100, quality, duration, Detailed view of the different stages of your sleep and their quality, plus stress and restless or awake moments, which provide a better overall picture about your sleep quality. And you can tap on each uh, one of these to get even more details, like optimal range and so on. Then you have the sleep chart, and this chart provides two key features. You can do this with your thumb, which is great, and you can overlay another chart on top of it, like the HR, respiration, etc. For example, you might discover you were in deep sleep and your breathing rate was way, way too low. And things like that or the SpO2 can be very useful in diagnosing sleep apnea or other uh, sleep disorders. And once again, you can add notes. This is great, except I guess the only problem is that you can easily lose these notes. So it would have been great if you could see the days that you've written down notes on these long-term sleep charts. Now, two quick tips here. Sometimes you might notice the start or end time of your sleep is wrong, and you can easily do that from here. It is sleep times. Just bear in mind that you can't revert this change. The second tip is that whether or not your watch tracks naps, you can manually add naps from the sleep coach section. Now, I realized that it would take me forever if I wanted to cover everything there is to this app in one video, so I'm going to have to make more videos. But these have been some of the most important features and tips for the Garmin Connect app, and admittedly, the new version isn't that much different from the old one because mostly it's just the front page that's been revamped. What do you think of the new version? But earlier I told you I'm going to show you where those points you get from different badges go to. If you go to the home page and then tap the profile icon and then profile, you will see that your current level. I'm at level four. I can see all my badges here and how many points I need to earn to get to the next level. I also promise to show you how to set a default privacy. 
So again, from the home page, tap the profile icon, then settings, and then profile and privacy. Now you can change the default privacy setting of your activities or other things. See you in the next one, guys.